Yo! Yo! What's up? I'm Adam. I'm Marco. All right, Marco, thank you so much for joining us. If thank you're you. not familiar with Marco, he is over at SQLBI.com doing all sorts of amazing content, working with DAX and data modeling. Marco and I, we, we bumped into each other in the hallway and I said, hey, Marco, I'm struggling understanding this new timeline feature that came out in yep. DAX Studio. So Marco, yeah, can you help me? Of course. Okay. So the timeline is uh, is a feature we introduced in uh, DAX Studio to better display what is going on between the formula engine and the storage engine. Okay. Two elements yep. that uh, are part of the execution of the DAX language. The formula engine is single thread, storage engine multi-threaded. Uh, they do different things. We always had all the information in DAX Studio, but now we can see the big picture in a single visualization. And Ooh, it helps like us it. understanding the interaction between the two engines. Yeah. All right, Marco. You know, we like to do it here in Guiding Cube. Enough of all this talking, let's head over to your machine. I prepared a few examples. We are working on a, on a database that has 100 million rows in a fact table. It's a classical conto also and yeah. so on. Yeah. And so this is a, an example where we have an execution that is uh, intentionally slow because we wanted to show the effect of the callback data ID that you see highlighted here. This is another feature we have in DAX Studio, by the way. We highlight yeah. not just the name callback data ID, but also the entire DAX code that you have in the, nice. in the query. And is, is, is it fair to say if I see a callback data ID that we're going back into the formula mm -hmm. engine? Yes, correct. But when you see that, even though the, the formula engine is invoked, you see that we have a blue line. Let, let me explain okay. what is this blue line. Right. So what we had before was this uh, formula engine and storage engine, where the formula engine was displayed as 2 to 6%, which is a small, tiny fraction yeah. of the execution. But actually, this visualization doesn't tell us where. We kept this visualization because it's easier to see the split between the two. Yep. But as you see in this timeline area, the yellow part in this area is between two storage engine queries. Yeah. The first one is doing this extraction, and the second one is executing this uh, aggregation by product brand, invoking the formula engine. However, you see that I selected a single storage engine query, and this bar shows me the duration of the storage engine request. The cost of the formula engine during this storage engine request is still in charge to the storage engine. Okay. So in other words, uh, the storage engine asked to the formula engine, help me, but the bill is paid by the storage engine. No. Okay. Let's see another example I prepared. We have in this case a single storage engine query that actually solves the entire query. So if I show the code this way, you see that there is a single storage engine request that solves the problem. However, we still have still a have cost yellow for line. the form. Yeah. yeah. Why this? Look at the number of rows. We are producing 400,000 rows, and the formula engine has to digest these rows, mm. and it has to consume time. Now, in this case, if you look at the DAX code, we have a distinct count for the number of unique products we have for each day, country, and color. So 400,000 are the combination of those three attributes, so we're actually creating a large result. But the cost of the calculation for each of these rows is still high. And if we try to look into the details, you see that I enable this internal. Sometimes a single request made from the formula engine to the storage engine internally is split into different requests. So in this case, we have three internal requests. Actually, the first two are the same. This is just duplicated internally. And you can see that there is a definition of all the combination of country, date, color, and product key, which is the number of the distinct count. And once we have this internal data cache consumed by storage engine, this is the distinct count, which is a single count operation over right. an internal operation. Right? These okay. are the technical details. But yeah. once again, you can see here the distribution of the time, also within internal storage engine requests. Right. We have another example where, in this case, we have 136 storage engine queries. Let's take a quick look. We have another distinct count with a running total. So we are counting how many unique products we sold since the beginning of the history of our company. You see that we have a lot of consumption in storage engine, but we also have many storage engine queries. Right. Look at what happens when I scroll down. You see that small yeah. Yeah. It's going forward. line is going forward. What is happening here? Well, if you see, there is some yellow sometime, which means that there is a continuous uh, interaction yeah. between formula engine, call the storage engine, result back. Call the storage engine result back. At the end, we waited for 22 seconds, yeah. but the storage engine used many cores for each request. Overall, we spent 300 seconds of CPU. Now, 
If I'm the only user, that's fine. But if I have many users request this at the same time, it's going to be expensive. It's going to be expensive. Yeah. So we can see that if I, in this case, change this uh, calculation and I go to the next example, where we use another technique to obtain a distinct count, we are not going faster. Yeah. If you look at the, at the time, we are now running in 38 seconds, but we reduced the storage engine cost, which means that we have a slower query for one user, which yeah. is less expensive for the company. So when you have many users, this is the kind of decision you want to make. Yeah. And so having this kind of timeline visualization that helps you having a quick look at what is going on, it saves you time trying to look at all the numbers just yeah. to understand, oh, we have a, a distribution this way, or we have the preparation of the filter that is uh, consuming time in, this, in the formula engine and so on. So there are many cases where this helps saving time trying to understand what is going on. I love this. And I also love the fact of the balance between the storage engine CPU versus the total time. When we think about premium capacity and spend on that front, like that's where you're going to see where it matters. Are there any common things that people can yeah. keep in mind when they're, hey, if I want to reduce the formula engine, like uh, what do they look for? Well, it depends, it right? Depends. It depends because uh, like in this last example, you could use a, a technique that is faster in right. certain conditions, mm -hmm. but the same technique is slower in others. So the optimization is always relative. The golden rule, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Always. The lower Ooh. the amount of code you write, the simpler you write, the better. Which I would add, though, also the, the more efficient your data model is. Of course. Of the course. better your DAX is going to be. You know what is the best DAX you can write? No DAX at all. No DAX just some. All. Yeah. Just some. some. And that's it. And, that's and it. it works? Fine. Bam. You don't have to write anything. It just works. That's a great yeah. point of like you've got to validate and test these things against your data and yeah. your data model to know. And then iterate and try different things and exactly. see what works better in your case. Um, exactly. Not, the very same optimization yep. is actually good for one report or one data model but it's bad for another case. I'm gonna tell you, if you want to learn a lot more information about how to optimize your DAX, whether it's in this in our formula engine versus storage engine, or just optimizing DAX in general, check out their course. They yeah. just updated a new version of optimizing DAX. It's amazing how much content is in there. So far, because we didn't complete it, uh, we will uh, release other additional modules for direct query and composite models by the end of 2023 this yeah. year. We already released the imported model part and just the lectures alone is 30 hours. 30 hours, yeah, that's it's, amazing. It's, that's a lot. It's that's insane. way more than we can include in a five to 10 minute yeah. video. So go check that out as well. Also, if you want to learn more about DAX or Power BI in general, check out the video up above. YouTube's going to recommend something awesome for you. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.